Hello and welcome to Coding with Day. If you are new here, please find the first and second episodes in the description below. And also, please like and subscribe my channel if you gain some knowledge from this series. So further ado, let's get started. Let's see how we can read the data without using Stream Builder. To do this, we'll create a boolean ease loading value and we'll set it to false. Then I'll be creating a Rx list which will be having a model. We'll call this task model. We'll be creating a folder called model inside the library folder and inside that we'll be creating the task model dot dot. Then inside the task model dot dot we'll be creating a string task and boolean value is done as our variables. I'll be creating these variables as final at first because it will allow me to use VS Code automated constructor generator for my easiness. Now that's done, we'll head back to the to-do controller and import task model. Now let's create our data ready method. This will be an async future and we'll name it as get data. Inside this, we'll be having a try catch and inside the try catch, we'll be running a Firebase query and capturing our data using a query snapshot. Then iterate each and every document inside this snapshot and adding into our task list. We'll have to clear the task list before we add these data to prevent the duplication. Then make ease loading false and call in get update function to manually update as we are using getx builder. If an error occurs, I'll print it into log for our simplicity. You can use get snack bar or some other way to handle this error if needed. Then we'll head back to home and wrap the scaffold inside a get builder. So right now the extension is not correctly working, but it's easy. You just do the exact steps that I do, then you'll be good to go. Then we'll introduce to-do controller over here inside the get builder and remove the to-do controller that we use at the very first. Also, don't forget to import the get builder. You can use this underscore, but I prefer to have the controller name correctly, so I use to-do controller over there. And then call get data from the to-do controller. So what we do is every time the the context is built, um, this method will execute. So it'll act same as a stream builder. Now let's show our data. First we'll remove this const. 
Now that's done, next we'll load the data. To show the data, we'll be checking is loading value is false. If it's true, we'll be showing a circular progress indicator. Else if it's false, I'll be showing the data using a list view builder. I'll be returning a list tile inside the list view builder and item count will be the length of the task list. The title of the list will be the task name. And hit save. And this error counts because you have not given an item count. So we'll give a to do controller task list length. This will solve this issue. Now that we are done that, we'll add delete and edit buttons. To do that, we'll be adding trailings. Inside that, we'll be adding a row. Inside the row, we'll be having two icon buttons. Let's create our first icon, edit button. For the time being, I'll be printing edit to terminal. And hit save. And we are greeted with another error. This is because the row length has not been defined. To do that, we'll be wrapping it inside a size box and giving its width. Next, I'll be copying the same icon button and pasting it and changing its name to delete. And I'll be giving it a color of red as well, is that it has overflowed by X amount of pixels. To rectify that error, we need to increase the width of our size box or the row. To increase the visibility and the organization of the code, I'll be creating a method out of this. In the future, I'll be using the same method to update and add to do items. To do that, I'll be giving a variable for title so we can change the title when we need it, and another string for the ID. So I'll be sending the ID of the task. The reason why I'm sending the ID because if we are updating an item, uh, we'll be updating it using the ID, and if we don't, I'll be sending a null value or empty value to the ID and then inside our to-do list controller add to-do 
I'll be having another string ID there and we have to add the string ID here as well then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the ID is null or not if it's null or empty I'll be send, sending as null and if it's not null or empty then I'll be giving the ID of the value Now everything's in order. So let's uh, create the edit function. So there I'll be calling again add task dialog and instead of that I'll be giving the title of update task and sending in the ID. So this ID will be taken from to do controller task list and I'll be updating it because we'll be needing to update the model as well. So here we add a string value of call ID and add it to the constructor. Then inside of a to-do controller, we'll need to add that ID as well right in the front because we added in the very front of the constructor. So I'll be calling it like that and it's good to go. And now we'll refresh the app and run it and try to update a task. Before updating, we need to do a little bit more changes. Um, so a string task should be sent to the dialog because at initially we'll be taking the value of our task controller or the text controller. So it'll be null. So when updating, it should show the previous value. So to do that, I'll be sending the task value to the text controller. So what I'm doing is I'm checking if the task is null or empty. So that's what I'm doing when adding. I'll be sending an empty value towards that. And if it is not empty, then I'll be assigning the value to the task controller. So that will show the value there inside the text field. Now we'll try updating the task. As you can see, update is working fine. So let's try adding an item. So what happens here is that the controller takes the value and it keeps there. To overcome this issue, we can clear the task controller after each update. Now let's try adding a new to-do. And we come across this error. So let's see our log. Uh, as you can see, it says that it's a null path. So let's open our log and see. Uh, in the debug console, we can see it says um, there, yeah, none empty string. So what does this mean is when you are trying to add this new to-do task, the document is uh, pointing at a null value. So far our update function worked well. This means that we are adding a new task and it's pointing towards a null or an empty string. So let's try changing the code. As you can see, that solved our issue in saving a new task. This is because the ID which is sent is not exactly empty, but it's a blank string. As you can see, we are rebuilding our page or showing our new tasks 
every time it's added in real time without using the stream builder. And now we'll create the delete function. So let's create a void function called delete task inside the controller and this will be taking a string parameter called id. So what we're going to do is we're going to run it we're going to run an uh, Firebase query and delete the task. Now we'll head back home and call the delete function on, on press inside the delete icon button. Now that's done, let's try deleting some tasks. As you can see it works fine. Let's delete a few and add more. And now let's add a checkbox to show completed and non-completed items. To do that, I'll be adding leading tag in the list tile and creating a checkbox widget. Inside the checkbox, on change will be called and the inverse value of the is done of the selected checkbox will be sent to add to do function. Basically, this works as an update. It will update the is done value inside each task value. And now, after the update is done, we have to call that getData function to refresh the data. And we'll have to move this get back to the save button because we can't keep it here, else every time the update goes, it'll call back. Now you can see it works fine and everything is updated. I hope you learned something new from this series. If you'd like to help me out, please like, share and subscribe as much as you can. This will help me out to create more awesome content like this. Till then, stay safe.